Hey guys, so welcome back. All right, let's uh, let's go back to an old radio here. This is uh, a General Electric, and it's a model 875. I've done just a little bit of research on this. This is from like around 1956, 1957, somewhere in that time frame. If I find the date code inside, uh, we'll we'll see if we can spot it. Uh, I haven't had this open yet. I picked this up. At an auction, there's the tag number. I don't remember what I paid for it, probably a couple of bucks. This is uh, all plastic. This is not Bakelite, this is plastic. And it's got a on-off control and moves like this. It's got civil defense markings here, back when we had civil defense channels. And uh, looking at the back and the tube setup, it's a tube radio, and I see five five uh, tubes and it's not very heavy so this is going to be an all-american five radio with no transformer so these will be series string so uh, we'll see what kind of checks we can do before we open this thing up I know who's going to end up with this radio and they're interested in old retro things I've never seen really a radio that has tubes in it that glows and everything and so I thought they might be interested in looking at this video one day just to see what it you know what's inside this thing and how it works and what was necessary to bring it back to life because as everybody hopefully knows you don't take an old radio like this and plug it in okay we got some special equipment I'm going to show a little bit of you know those of you who are experienced know exactly what I'm talking about but whoever ends up with this radio has probably never seen a radio repair video before so bear with me I'm going to try to explain a few things as we go I'm not going to make it everything but just a few things so people can kind of see it and if you're new to this, you might enjoy this as well, or refer it to somebody who maybe you'd be interested in this sort of thing. I'm not going to cover everything, but I'm going to show a few things, and I hope you enjoy it. And that's the whole idea. All right, so I have a schematic for this. And here it is. All right. So for those of you that are not initiated, I'll just kind of run through a few quick basics on it. The power comes in here through a plug. Okay, it has a disconnect in the back panel. So when you take the back panel, it disconnects this, which is a nice safety feature. It has this is AC coming in. The radio is going to require direct current. It didn't have really diodes like we have today, so it had a rectifier tube in it that had basically two. Well, in this case, had a diode in it that would give you uh, a rectification. And then there's a set of filters that go up and provide some smoothing of the ripple. And then it goes off, and this provides the high voltage that goes and goes into the tubes. Now I say high voltage, right? So this is a, this has vacuum tubes in it. The rectifier is one, and there's four others. Now what's different about this than transform, uh, transistor radios you have these days is they take a fairly high amount of voltage for these things to work. All right. So if you look at this one here, this one's going to have 120 volts on that pin right there that's called the plate all right this one says 125 volts coming off the cathode of the rectifier and this is not just a small amount of, not just a fairly high voltage with small power behind it this things can pack a wallop all right so this is not something you want to open up and mess with that's why these things had interrupts here on the case uh, so it's got a series of, of tubes that do a number of jobs. Just real briefly, this is the antenna that you use to pick up. It's got an internal ferrite antenna, it looks like to me. It has an oscillator down here. You tune both of them by turning the knob on the front of the radio. And this converter tube has got two functions. It, has an, it runs the oscillator, which is down here. And then it has a function that mixes the signal coming from the antenna with the signal coming from the oscillator. And it does a little bit of magic. Uh, it's called a superheterodyne type circuit. At the end of the day, what you end up with is a carrier signal that comes through here. No matter how you tune this, there'll be a carrier signal. It's called the intermediate frequency, which is 455 kilohertz, kilocycles in this case, right? And that's the same. No matter what station you tune to, this circuit provides you to have one of the, one of the frequencies that comes out of here is always 455 kilohertz that's being modulated by the radio station. So it's amplitude modulation AM. And these two are filters that filter out the other three carriers you get out so that you just get the one 455 that's modulated. This X is an amplifier. This does this. 
This also has a couple of diodes in it that takes it from a, uh, a signal on the carrier wave into an audio signal that we can hear. It also has a feedback circuit to make it to where the loud stations are a little bit quieter so it makes it easier to hear the quiet stations. And then it also provides the input that goes to the audio output tube. And the audio output tube then allows it to go from a, a high voltage small amount of current to a low voltage high amount of current to then drive the coils that are on the speaker, the loudspeaker, which is right here. So that's basically how this works, okay? And what we're going to do is just see if this thing will even work. First thing you want to do is in order for these tubes to work, they have to have a heater warming up the cathodes that are in these tubes. The heaters are strung up like Christmas lights in series, as you see here. So what we're going to do is check to see if there's continuity through all of these. If any one of these are burned out, we won't get any continuity. So this is a nice quick check that we can do to see what do we have. And we don't even have to plug stuff in, up, just plug things in. Uh, another thing I see here, which is kind of interesting, I want to point out, the thing that's kind of dangerous about these radios is if you ever want to see what a hot chassis radio looks like, this is one of them. So these are non-polarized plugs. You can see this. Like when I was a kid, both blades are the same size. So you could plug it in this way or you could plug it in that way. And I remember being a kid getting jolted by screws in the bottom of radios, and my dad would say, well, just take it out turn it around. Or sometimes just to see if you get better reception okay and so you don't know which one of these would get the line the hot from your wall circuit or which one would be the, the neutral if you look at the schematic let's say that that bottom line is your line okay is your is your hot coming from the wall if you happen to plug it in that way will you come here and you turn that switch on and now the hot goes straight to ground Okay, so now the ground is at full 120 volts to neutral. So if you're standing there and you were to touch that chassis and that was plugged in in that direction, you'd get, you'd get a shock right there, okay? So this is one of the reasons that people have gone to polarized plugs. First thing we we'll do is try to get this radio to work and diagnose it, see what's wrong with it, and then look at how we can make this a safe radio to operate. I'll put in, if we get to that point, I'll put in a fuse, I'll make sure that the line goes to one place. Uh, that capacitor needs to be changed out so that it's a safety capacitor. Um, and then we'll see what else we want to do with it. But uh, let's just see if this thing even works to see if it's worth the effort, okay? So uh, let's, get, uh, let's get into it. All right. So if we want to check those tubes, let's just... Uh, Boy, this line, look at that hot line is, I don't know if it's wanting to crack, but it is incredibly, you know, hard. All right, so let's see. Reach across you here. Get a couple of leads. Doesn't matter which one polarity I go on these. It's off. All right, let's bring this up and put this on ohms. All right, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so then these two leads. Okay, that's working. Hook that up. Hook that up. Okay, it shows that there's no continuity, which makes sense because that switch is off. So I'm going to turn that switch on and see if we see the resistance of all of that right there. So let's see what we get when we turn it on. That's reading mega ohms. It went up and then it went to nothing. So now it shows that we have no, no continuity through that. Okay. So looking at this, it's possible what we saw was this capacitor charging up. Drew some current in order to do that. Uh, 
and then once it charged it shut down and then there's no other continuity through here so that means that one or more of these filaments are open there's one there there's one there 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 and there and those are the heaters that go to the tubes and the tubes you know are using the symbol V for valve and you can see the number here and they correspond with the valve number or tube number up here so there's V1 V2 and here they are down here showing you and this shows which pin they go to on the different tube sockets alright so I guess the next thing to do is, is I'm going to open this thing up and we'll see what sort of situation we have in here I may rock these tubes around see if they've just got a bad connection and see if we get anything coming through in continuity so let me get this thing open and then we'll see what we have So on hot chassis sets, these will, well sometimes they go into the chassis itself so the screws on the back could be hot. Now once again this is not plugged into anything. Alright, first look in how many years. Alright, so this board is now off. This is the interrupt. Okay, so when you take the back off it necessarily unplugs the power line. So if somebody takes this off they can't put their fingers in here and get jolted. Um, so we've got a couple of dead denizens in here. Okay, let me get this out of the way. And then we'll see what we have in here. Let me zoom you in just a little bit. Okay, so we have, well obviously we've got the speaker. There's been some kind of attempt to clean this or something. You see this white splashing up underneath here and it kind of got on the speaker frame. I don't know if it's on the paper or not. We'll, we'll find out later, I guess. Okay, as we look in here, let's see. There's our ferrite bar antenna. Here's our tuning capacitor. We can see that moving when I turn the knob. Okay, once again, this is not plugged in. And then, let's see, there's our tubes. One, one, two, three, four, five. This one's got a shield on it. These are the intermediate frequency transformers. These are the kind that have the adjustable slug and a fixed capacitor. So, uh, two fixed capacitors, and there's probably two slugs, one from above and below these can be a problem. The capacitor in there may have a a problem with silver migration on the mica, so-called silver mica disease. We'll have to see how this sounds. Uh, if necessary, we may have to take these apart and do some experimentation with pl replacing the capacitors. I hope we don't need to do that, but it's possible. I've had some of these work okay, but we'll just have to see. Uh, this type of capacitor will have to go. This is a paper type, molded paper bumblebee type capacitor here and then this is a paper wax dip paper capacitor that'll have to be changed eventually uh, the resistors seem to be Allen Bradley type they don't look like they're roundies and there's the main filter capacitor uh, that's probably not any good uh, but we'll find out okay well let me just see if I can wiggle the tubes and get a different uh, reply, if you will, on getting current through these heaters. Uh, if not, then I'm going to have to pull the board out and see what we got. All right, so take the alligator clips off the plug and I'll put them here. Polarity won't matter. Okay, so that shows I've got six mega ohms. 8 mega ohms, I and mean, this should not be anywhere near this high of resistance.
3 volts or something. Heading towards 20 mega ohms. <laughs> okay, well, that's charging capacity. Let me just wiggle these tubes around. Now, once again, this is not plugged in. The only thing I'm hooked up to is a voltmeter. That's 108 ohms. That looks like that was a problem. We just had a sticky socket. 108 ohms doesn't sound too bad, does it? Let's try this. This normally would have like 6 volts or so going through them on a lot of um, radios that have a transformer. Now we're back up to the mega ohms. Open. Okay. Well, that wasn't even in. Okay, this has some shielding on it. I'm going to take the shielding off for right now. If I can get it out of here. Come on. Come on. Well, man, it's close enough. All right, let me see if I can get it plugged in correctly. Hundred sixty ohms. It's higher than it was a while ago. Okay. This one's touchy. I'm going to pull this out a little bit and push it back in. Back to 108 ohms. Okay. So that tells me the filament string seems to have continuity through it. So what do you want to do now? Well, Normally on these things, what we're going to find, right, is these filter caps are probably going to be bad. And if we leave them in there, they're going to be leaking DC through them. And we could damage the rectifier. So if we do turn this on, I don't want to leave that on for long or it'll wreck this rectifier. Uh, we need to be careful of getting shocked here. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And um, now another thing is, is that, and I like to do this kind of right away. If you remember, the radio I worked on from the 30s had a blown output transformer in it. That had been caused by a coupling capacitor between this tube and this tube. And that would be this cap right here. And it had basically gotten so electrically leaky it was throwing the bias off on this audio output tube and then that basically caused this thing to go into overdrive. It did the bias on this too high and it burned up a connection in this coil and it burned that coil out. Um, I definitely don't want that to happen. So another thing I could do is check to see if maybe something like that may have already happened. So I can check. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I could check the continuity through this coil and I could do it from pin 7 on the audio output tube socket to pin 7 of the rectifier. So without this thing turned on I could check continuity between those two points and verify that that is sorry that that has got continuity through it. You might want to do that before I do too much other work on this just in case that's the case because I could just kind of wreck the whole project. But it's kind of tempting to try to see if it'll make noise. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to do. So let me do a few things to get set up for that. Uh, in order to do this safely, there's a couple of things I need to do, and I'm going to show you what that is. But basically, you know, 
if you get this radio or you get a, if you guys are somewhere and you find a radio like this and any of these other folks that work on radios will tell you this do, don't go plug this into your wall okay for a number of reasons okay usually it's because of safety issues like we talked about here this cap has probably gone bad um, and, and, and this could be a short uh, straight to the chassis and bite you pretty bad and you might end up damaging it too if you don't end up damaging yourself so there's some special things you have to do when you find an old radio like this and you have to have some special equipment all right and everybody that works on these things know what that is but I'm going to tell you uh, you have to have a type of transformer that isolates yourself from this line there's no transformer here so that's called an isolation transformer you're not going to have one of those you're not going to want to pay for one you know just to go mess with this so don't don't just don't do it okay unless you want to get into this hobby all right and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up on a current limiting system. So if there's any kind of short in here, that current limiter will prevent it from damaging things or causing a problem. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is bring the voltage up slowly on a variable power supply, a variac. And what that'll do is it'll allow me, first of all, to make sure if I've got a short, it'll stop it at an earlier voltage. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, uh, some of these capacitors, they might still be possibly okay but they haven't been used in so long they have a chemical issue that goes on within them and if you bring the voltage up a little slowly they can reform and actually kind of start to work so there's a few things that we have to do in that way i'm going to get that set up and then i'll show you what that is real quick and then we'll turn this thing on and see what it gets and then we'll see whether this is a project to go forward with or not so just hang with me for just a bit It'll be over in, in two seconds for you, but I need to set up the power supply hookup. And I'll just show you what that is, and then we'll go through it real fast, okay? Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a line set up here. So let me show you real quick what I have. I'm going to pan over just a little bit. Got my camera set up here to show you what I have over here amongst all my junk. So over here, this is a variable power supply. It's called like a Variac. And then I have an isolation transformer. Uh, the isolation transformer isolates the neutral that I'm standing on the ground from this circuit. I'm not, there's no ground that goes through here, it's isolated. And then the line also goes through a light bulb, and you can barely see the light bulb here, it's on top. I can bypass the light bulb or I can go through it. This is my current limiting. If I get a short, this bulb will glow real bright, okay? We'll be able to see it. Let me tilt this camera so we can maybe see that. Okay. All right. So what I'll be doing is turning on the power. I'm going to be adjusting the voltage with this and then turning you back over to here. That line comes down to a little panel I have. So I have another fuse here. This has a fuse in it up here as well, but it's, it's a 10 amp fuse. This is a one amp fuse that will really help also in addition to the light bulb. Uh, the kilowatt will allow me to uh, watch my current I'm going to be measuring the voltage coming out of the Variac with this right here. So this will show me my voltage I have it set at. And then, um, I don't have this hooked up to anything right now. But now I have this hooked up going into um, the radio. I have the radio turned off. One of the things you'll notice is since this is a hot chassis, you'll notice that the screws went into this plastic case, not into the board. And the knobs on the front of this are all plastic, and the whole thing's plastic. So the way that they got around the fact that you could be connecting the hot directly to the chassis is, if as long as the back was on, you couldn't touch anything that would nail you, okay? Other radios, the screws would come in through the bottom right into the chassis, so if you touch the screws in the bottom, you could get jolted. Anyway, so this one doesn't have that feature. It has better isolation than most, but it's still not terrific. Okay, so let's turn this thing on. I've got the radios turned off. I will be able to turn that on by just touching a plastic knob, so that'll be, that'll be relatively safe. So I've turned down the voltage here, and I'm going to turn on the power, and then we'll be able to see the voltage come up here, and we're currently at 80 volts. Turn that down a little bit. Let's start out in the 50s. Okay, the dim bulb it's called dim bulb tester, it is in the circuit. This is showing the voltage. I'm going to switch to power here, amps. I'll do amps. And of course, there's nothing. All right, so I'm going to now turn the power on on the switch in the front. 
and we're going to watch that light bulb and the voltage. Power is going on now. Okay, we saw a little bit drop here because we're probably taking some current. I don't see any glow on the bulb and we're drawing 100, 140, 140 milliamps. Okay, so we're doing some good with that. Okay, you can see that. Okay. I don't expect to hear anything here. <coughs> it's not really enough voltage to operate the radio, but we're getting pretty close. So, um, so let it sit there for just a few more seconds. And now I'm going to turn the, the voltage up here on the variac and we'll watch it on this little meter here. Let's get up into the high 60s. So let's set there a sec. I'm getting hum. Can you hear it? Okay, we're getting hum. That's a that's the kind of hum you would get from the line. So basically, you know, it's a 60 hertz hum getting through that filter capacitor right there, that big brown one. So we'll be able to eliminate that by replacing that. As you hear it humming, I'm going to turn the tuning. Okay, I don't hear anything yet. Okay, I'm going to turn the voltage up. We're currently still 140 milliamps. Is that right? Yeah. Let's turn up some more. There's 80, mid 80s on the voltage. And some static. Nothing yet. But it's a good it's a good sign we're getting hum from the uh, from the speakers. That means the audio output transformer is okay. Going up in voltage. I don't want to wait too long leaving voltage on the old caps. There's 100 volts, and we're pulling 17 amps, 15 watts. I believe this thing says it runs at 30, 30 watts. So we're not quite there yet. Tune the capacitor. Okay, I'm not hearing anything yet. That ought to be enough voltage to hear something. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. Getting 18 watts out of it or into it. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. I'm going to go to 117. This is a uh, true RMS on that meter. Okay, 117 volts going in. It's currently at 19 watts. So something's not working like it should. Probably have res resistor values that have creeped up. Okay, so I'm not getting anything, except I am getting hum. So we know the audio circuit seems to be working. So maybe what I'll do is see if I can provide it a little bit of a signal and see if we get if it gets through this. But in the meantime, I'm going to turn it off now. Noisy, noisy, uh, noisy volume control. Let me move that around a little bit and see if that'll help with this reception. No. All I'm doing is moving the knobs in the front. Okay. Okay, turned it off. Alright, so what I'm going to do is see if I can rig up uh, a signal that I can put into this and see if it finds its way through uh, part of the radio. 
So I'll get that set up and then I'll start the camera again. So hang on. Okay, so now what I have is I have a little signal generator that I have wired in with a inexpensive frequency counter because of the way this is. Now, this I've shown this once before. This is a great you know post that was put up by X-ray Tony B. I'll put a link to it in the show notes on this. Really, really great solution he did on how to use one of these inexpensive frequency counters <clears throat> wired in with a buck converter inside here. So it's not only is plugged in through the, the connection in the back, but also it provides the power for this. Really, really great design. I've used this many times, and I use it at least one of my other videos. So anyway, uh, what I want to do is use this to see if I can stimulate the front end of the radio and see if we can get anything out of it. Okay, that'll tell us some things. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so we turn the power back on. I'm not showing the all the stuff over here I had a while ago. You know the drill by now. Okay, so we're at we turn the radio on. Radio's on. 90 volts. Uh, let's go to watts. 14 watts. Here comes the hum. Okay, there's a hundred and let me back off a little bit, 117 volts, which is what this is looking for. I'm currently at 19, a little over 19 watts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn on this frequency generator. All right, and here it doesn't show very easily. Let me see if I can give you some shade from these lights I've got here. There we go. Okay, the light is blinking there. So that means that's 450 kilohertz. The IF frequency is 455. So I want to see how sensitive this is. That's why this frequency counter is so nice to have. All right. 455. Pretty, there you go. 455 kilohertz. Okay. That's the IF frequency of the intermediate, the intermediate frequency for this radio. So that should pass through the IF section through the output because the IF will allow that to pass. All right, and then when it gets to the detector, we'll be able to hear the modulation. All right, so this is going to put a thousand hertz modulation on this right there, and I'm going to turn it up. This isn't reading correct anymore, so don't worry about that too much. Actually, it looks like it was reading pretty good, but anyway. Uh, then on the end of this, I've just got a little coil. I could use a smaller coil. That would probably work better. Let me just see if I can bring this close to the radio and see what we get. Ah, can you hear that? Well, the uh, volume is getting kind of loud in there, but you could hear the tone from the modulation going through into here. So that tells me that this detector is working because I'm putting a 450 kilocycle signal into there that has, a, I think it's a thousand hertz modulation on it. So the only reason we could hear that is this diode, this detector diode is working and the rest of the audio stage was working. Okay. So we know, we know that all works. Uh, we don't know for sure if the oscillator is working or uh, how well these are working. I hear a lot of static. It could be coming from a dirty volume pot. Uh, it could be caused by a number of other issues. Uh, but what you worry the most about next will probably be so-called silver mica disease. Uh, a problem with these capacitors right here. One, two... 
three, four. Uh, when these have the variable inductors, these fixed capacitor ones can be a problem. And uh, sometimes it's it's not really worth fixing unless you just want to do it, I guess. I may do it. We'll just see. Uh, but anyway, that could be causing that crashing uh, static sound that we hear. Or it could be just bad connection on the volume pot. Maybe some bad you know, two, uh, tube pins that need to be cleaned. Uh, so we can, what I want to do is, uh, I'll probably clean the volume control, pull the, 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 um, the, va the, uh, tubes and clean the pins, make sure there's not any bad connections here. Um, then what I might do is just go through and check a few voltages to see if I'm getting the right plate voltages. Uh, the next thing might be to see if my, uh, if my oscillator section is running. Um, because then if this isn't working, then that explains why I'm not getting anything through the IF stages. Well, I am, but I'm not, I'm, I had to provide my own input here. So maybe the oscillator's not running or there's some other problem in here. Uh, but we'll see. But when I put in the signal, I was definitely getting, you know, on a, carrier, a modulated carrier tone, I was getting the audio out. So all the tubes are working. Uh, at least as far as heaters go, and we'll just have to see what we're working with here. I could also use my signal tracer to see where things drop in and out. So let me uh, set all this back up and I'll bring you back. Hey guys, it's the next morning. Uh, yeah, I got to look in and my battery was getting weak, and so I just decided to call it a, a night last night and check to see if I had any files come through on my card and look like I was doing okay. I had noticed a little bit of a problem with the the <laughs> covering for the microphone was showing, so I tried to get that out of the way. Anyway, so it's next morning, and let's pick this up where we left off for a bit. Um, I think the way I had this left was that uh, I was able to get the signal generator to put the intermediate frequency with a modulated tone through through this. And uh, I was noticing maybe it wasn't really clear <clears throat> about a couple of things I made a comment about. So this thing right here, okay, there's one here and there's another one right down here. We call those the IF transformers, okay? That's that's these two boxes you see in dotted lines, okay? So these are like bandpass filters. They're set up and imagine like a like a bell curve kind of thing. They're they're set up to allow frequencies centered around 455 kilocycles to get through and it blocks the ones that are not on that frequency the further away okay so this one does a first filter and then this one amplifies what's left and then this one filters again so it's just a way of polishing it up to make it to where as few other frequencies get through that would be coming from the the antenna of course but then also as I mentioned the super heterodyne magic that goes on inside this converter tube is you're going to get four you're going to get four four frequencies out of here one of them will always be the intermediate frequency the other three will vary depending on what you have the tuning capacitor sent to, set to now we'll get into all that I might mention it in passing a little bit later but this is what gets through the other thing I wanted to mention I started to talk about this capacitor right here so normally what I would do is want to check to see what this capacitor value is or to see if any of this plate voltage, this DC plate voltage, in this case it's 50 volts, is finding its way through that capacitor to this grid on the output tube. And you see right there that wants to be at zero volts, okay, in standard conditions. So if this is, you know, much higher than that, then I know I've got a problem with this capacitor. Normally I would just change that. The problem is, is that this one, as you see, is in a dotted box, okay? So this is actually a monolithic device called a couplet. And it's like a, prim a you know, primitive integrated circuit. It's, it's linear in that it's got, there's no integrated, there's no, like, brain boxes in here. But you've got capacitors and resistors set up in a network, okay? And it's all inside of a case. So any of these things are wrong. You know, basically, I just need to pull that thing out and wire up something like this and put it in there. So if that cap's bad, I may have to do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it alone. It may be okay, but I'll verify that voltage so we don't wreck this output tube. The other thing I mentioned is that this output tube, I think I said, puts out a, 
a low uh, low voltage high current. No, it doesn't. It puts out a high voltage. It's it's amplifying, but this transformer is what transforms a high voltage low current to a low voltage high current to drive the uh, voice coil on the speaker. Anyway, corrected a few things there. Hopefully, if you if you caught them. Anyway, so we're going to go back, and one of the things I was looking at is okay. So I put in my own source into the input of this unit, and we were getting something coming through as long as it was sitting at 455 kilocycles. Okay, so the question is, is, is there something wrong with the front end here? Now, there's a couple of things it could be is that this oscillator circuit down here is not running. All right, sorry. This oscillator circuit down here is not running, and it could be for a couple of different reasons, but it could be that it's this converter tube has a problem. So what I'm going to do is check to see if this is working. There's a quick check I can do to see if there's anything happening here. And then the other thing I can do is I can pull this tube, and I have a tube tester, and I can see if that tube's okay. Uh, if it's bad, I might test the other tubes real quick, and then there's a place that sells tubes in town. I might be able to get there before they close, to close today and pick up a tube. Otherwise, it might be in a couple of days. This is a Saturday, so I might have to wait till the week. They're not open on Sunday. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, let me uh, check to see if the oscillator is running, and then if it is, uh, then I'll test it. I'll test this tube anyway. All right, so let's get going on that. Okay, so one of the things you can do, I showed this in another video. Let me get the radio turned on. Got the power on. Remember how this is all working. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to. The supply voltage that was kind of common when this radio was was sold, 117 volts is what it shows on the schematic, 120 volts, and that'll be fine. Okay, uh, I got this set for watts, and we'll turn the power on. Turn the voltage up a little bit since it's taking some current. What's happening is it's taking some current, it's going through the dim bulb, and that is drawing the voltage down a little bit. Okay, and by the way, on the dim bulb, you don't see anything blowing. We're going about 19, call it 20 watts. All right, so getting a lot of, certainly a noisy potentiometer on the volume. We'll clean that up. I've got it turned on all the way, but the radio is on. Okay, so if the oscillator is running, it should be running now. All right. So now I've shown this on another video. Got a, <clears throat> an old AM radio I got years ago, and you turn this on and tune it to a station, and then tune this such that you're changing the frequency that the oscillator is on, and look to see if you get any interference on this. Okay, so you got this turned down. We'll be listening to this, even though you hear the hum from that radio. So you hear this one. There. Now I'm going to turn, you'll see the tuning capacitor turn, so I'm also turning the capacitor in the oscillator circuit. Hear that? So if you look here, you can see I'm turning the tuning on the old radio. It's creating interference on this radio. So that shows me that that oscillator is running. So that's good news. That's good news. So now what we'll do is we'll check the uh, We'll check the converter tube. All right, let me get that set up. I need to make some room here. Uh, hang on, let me get this out of the way, move this, and we'll put the tube tester on, and we'll see how that uh, 
how that tube works out. We might test them all while we're at it. All right, so uh, let's get after it. Let me shut this down and move some stuff around. Okay, so this is my uh, Ico 65, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at testing the converter tube, which is a it's a 12AU6. All right, 12AU6. You can refer to the back panel and say, okay, so where's the 12AU6? And it's this one right up here, 12AU6. So it's the one on the top. You can see the two IF transformer boxes. That make that gives you some relation to where everything is. So this is the 12AU6. So let's take that out and give it a test. Power's off to this. All right. So here's a tube and you can see 12AU6. It's the right tube. All right. So let's see how we're going to test this thing. Okay, so let me bring you down to where you can see this tester right here. So hold on, we'll roll you down here. Don't fall off your chair. All right, so let me see if I can do this. All right, so look on here. This has a chart. Yeah. Let's go to the 12AU6. Let's see. The 12 means the heater filament is, will dissipate nominally 12 volts. AU is the factory code and 6 is uh, the number of active elements that are in it. I'll say 12AU6. 12. All right, 12AU6, you see that right there. All right, 12AU6, and this shows you some settings that I'm gonna have for the tester, all right? So, I'm gonna use the shunt at 22. Here's the shunt, I'll turn that to 22, best I can see it, okay. Uh, the filament will be set at 12.6. So here's the filament. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Back up a little bit. Okay, I've moved the filament over to, yeah, 12.6. I'm not sure which one I'm on. It's a little bit off, so it wants to be to the left. So the right of these is correct. Okay, so that's 12AU6. And then, let's see, the selector is set to 2. And then I'm going to have up be 1, 5, and 6. 1, 5, and 6. And then down is 2, 3, and 7. 2, 3, and 7. And the rest of them are on the middle line. Okay. And on the 237, 3 is underlined. So that means that when I shift it, it should glow on the shorts test. Now, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. This will be the short bulb. All right. All looks good. Let's, uh, let's turn this on first. And uh, we'll do line adjust. Line adjust. And I can adjust that here, and I want it to be right in the middle. You see that line adjust line? Okay. Let me, let me look at it before I can see it. It's got a thin blade right there, so it helps you get rid of parallax. Okay, so it's actually right on the line there. It's maybe hard for you to see that it is. All right, so now I'm going to go back to two. All right, so the bulb. 7 pin, and I believe this is the 7 pin socket right here. So let's put that in. Let me turn this 
turn this uh, off, I believe, to plug it in and out. Okay, 12AU6 is in. Okay, so we got the main thing to notice is I don't have the filament set too high because you can blow this. All right, and then this goes to two. I'll check that again. Okay, so we turn this on, and then we'll watch to see this tube start to glow. I see a filament glow inside there. There's there's silver stuff on top of here, but I can see it glowing in there. Let me check the line adjust again. Sorry. Yep, that looks good. Back to two. So, all right. We've got this all set up right. The tube short light is flickering. You see that? This tube has a short in it. All right. So, uh, that's probably the end of the test. Let's just see if I get any other shorts here. That should stay off. That should stay off. Is it three that's underlined? This should turn on, and it does. I'm looking here, okay. So that turns on. Uh, this one should stay off. This one should stay off. And this one should stay off. Okay, this one. It seems to have three is supposed to light up, okay. It seems like it might have a short in it. I'm going to go ahead and do the test on Merit, see how it looks. Okay. It's good, but it's a good tube. It ought to be working. But I don't like that short indication we were getting. And it's, it was intermittent. Yeah, see? As I tap that, that light's turning on. So this tube looks like it's got a short in it intermittently. So that may be cutting in and out. That could be causing the static that we're getting. It should work when it's not shorted, but I don't want it to damage anything either. But anyway, this tube needs to be replaced, I think, because of the way that short is doing. Okay. Let's try these other ones. 12BA6. Uh, that's the IF amplifier tube. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see that. It's 12BA6. So we'll put that in here. Okay. 12BA6. Twelve BA six shunt should be at twenty three. Okay, uh, BA six twenty three twelve point six is correct. Selectors at two. Okay. Okay, twelve BA six should be one five and six up. Five and six up, and three and three and seven down with three being underlined. All right. Filament set proper. Turn on. Should be glowing because uh, we know that the heater's okay. I don't see a glow though. here. No glow in the light. Well, this one should glow. It does. This one should not. 
This one should not. And this one should not. That little flash as it goes through the middle is okay. Uh, okay, so that looks okay. Let's try this. Good tube. Good. That's the IF amplifier tube and it looks okay. Sounds good. So that one's good. And put him back in. Can't really see what I'm doing here. There we go. We know the rectifier works. We know that um, the detector works. We know the audio output works. So that's really what I wanted to see. Is it looks like this this converter tube we need to replace. Um, I may put it back in there since it's just got an intermittent short and tap it some and see if I can't get something to come in. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to be doing pretty soon is taking this out. I'm just thinking whether I need to jump in the car and go get a a 12AU6 while they're open. I may I may do that real quick. Yeah, maybe I'll go do that. Anyway, you put this back in. We'll see what we get. Okay, that's back in. Let's get the handy tube tester out of the way. Power on. Watts. No, I don't. I don't have any twelve AU sixes, so uh, I'm going to have to go either buy some locally or order one, uh, find one, because this one may be able to get past the short when I'm doing the test, but the problem is if there's a short on in here, it can be pulling down to the voltages and making it to where that tube doesn't conduct. And we know from the fact that we're probably about 5 to 10 watts short, that would probably have a tube that's not conducting, and so that could be what the problem is. So uh, I'll check the other tubes just to make sure there's nothing else wrong, and then I'll go hit the store and Maybe I'll get lucky and we can finish this up a bit more later today. So anyway, I'm going to catch off now and I'll go check the stores. Bye. Okay, I'm back from my uh, trip into the big city to get another uh, 12A6. I'm lucky to have a local place where you can get some of these things. Six. Okay, so this needs to be set up at shunt at 22. Filament 12.6. <clears throat> Selector at 2. 1, 5, and 6 up. 1, 5, 6 up. 2, 3, 7 down. All right, 12 AU6, 22, 12.6, 2, 5, 6 up, and 2, 3, 7 down. And the, looks like the 3 is underlined. Okay. Filament, okay. So, put this new tube in. And turn it on. <clears throat> Set the line adjust. Okay, back to two, right? Yep, two. 
All right, so let's see if we got any shorts. It's not flickering this time, right? Give it a shadow there. So we don't have the short flickering, so that's an improvement. Okay, so does not turn on. Let's see which one do we want to turn on. We want three to turn on. Okay, so this one should not. Does not. This one should. It does. This one should not. This one should not. And this one should not. Okay, that all did like it's supposed to. And let's see if we get a good reading. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll say excellent. Much better. So we don't have any shorts, and this one's good to go. So, all right. Let's get that in, and we'll see if that gives us any difference at all. It may give us some different voltages, and maybe we'll start to draw some power uh, like we should. So get this out of the way, and we'll get that going. So here's our good tube. And let's see. Let me put it in. Let's see what we got. This is this the old one. Put the new one in. Okay. This is the 50C5. I tested the other tubes. They're all reasonably good. I didn't bother filming it. You may have noticed after I tested the 50C5, I turned the filament down when I was done with the test so I didn't possibly wreck this one by plugging in and having this set up high. So that's one good reason to turn that down always when you're done. Okay, so let's see, that's the one we replaced. Let's get this out of the way. Power on. Okay, let's turn the radio on. It's powering up. Get a little more voltage. That's too much. Still better hum. Okay, I'm going to change the tuning so we get anything. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my frequency generator and sweep a uh, modulated signal through here and see if we can pick it up like we did the IF frequency. Modulation high and currently at, I'll go ahead and go back to the IF frequency and see if it'll go through okay. Okay, that's the IF frequency. Now what I'm going to do is turn it up into a range that the scale is. I have the scale set around a thousand, well, a one megahertz, and we'll see what we can get if we can get up near that. Okay, so what that means is, is that the antenna was able to pick up a modulated signal on around a megahertz, and it was able to go through the tuning, com the tuning com uh, condenser or comp uh, capacitor, and then together with the oscillator, was able to then provide a tone that came out of the converter tube, and then was able to run through both the IFs, the IF uh, amplifier, the detector 
and the audio output tube and the audio output transformer to the speaker. So that basically means the whole radio is basically working. Now we just need to be able to get its performance back. To do that, I'm going to have to basically take this out of the cabinet and now start checking voltages and so forth. But it means fundamentally everything's here. You can hear that. And that's based on this. I should be able to tune this down here and then tune this to pick it up again. You might be able to see the the tuning happening right there. Oops. I wonder if I can clip this on. Well, so you might be able to see the tuning capacitor right there moving. So I'm exaggerating it so you can see it better. So right there, I'm picking up. picking up basically 960 a.m. It might be fun to go. A strong station around here is like 740 a.m. Let me go to 740 a.m. Let's see. This is jumping around like this. 740. Okay. Turn the oscillator back on, the modulator back on. Turn this way and pick it up. And so that should be about 740, picking that up. So that means I should be able to pick up that radio station right in here. I have to turn the antenna a little bit, but the sensitivity is just not there at all. It's not able to pick it up. Okay, so going back to the schematic here one more time. Alright, so what we've done is we found out that basically we can put a signal, modulated signal, onto a carrier, tune the radio, and it goes through everywhere and we can hear it. Problem is, it's just very, very hard, low to where you can barely hear it. So, there's a couple of things to check. One of them is is the uh, voltages that are through here because we might have had some components drift off of value and we're just not getting that. I should have checked the power draw. Let me turn this back on to see what power we're getting. Um, <clears throat> and see if something is not getting the right voltages where it's supposed to go. And then the other possibility is, is that these are way off. Okay, so that these filters are not allowing it through like it should. And it's just not able to hear the local station. So that could be possibly it too. So why would that be? Well, it could be that some components have drifted such that these IFs need to be tuned. Or it could be these capacitors are bad. All right. So before I dig into these, let me check those voltages and then we'll see what we get. Now, now that I've got this back up, now we hear a radio station. So we've got, probably got some capacitors reforming. We're doing 19 watts. And you can hear that, right? I didn't imagine that, right? So I can hear a voice that's just very really low. So 
one glue. So your professionals are working together. So just wanted to, to, to let everyone know that because that is an exciting development we have here in 2022. It's taken us a while to bring it to fruition because of a selective hiring process, a tight labor market, and a, uh, just a tremendous amount of competition out there. Not to mention okay, so what I'm hearing, so I'm hearing a lot of static on the volume control, but I don't hear silver mica disease. That's exactly what we do. People come in because they have the same questions that you have. They want to know, Troy, do I have enough money? Can I retire? From which bucket should I withdraw income from? I don't want to Well, isn't that exciting? So what I'm going to do is we need to replace this um, filter capacitor. This actually has two capacitors in it, and that will take care of the hum. And then we'll also check the voltages and all that. In order to do that, I'm going to have to take it out of the cabinet. <clears throat> so I'm going to let this kind of cool down a little bit. These, these tubes will get very hot, especially that one. And uh, then I'll take this out. It's going to be five screws, I believe. One, two, three, four, and I think there's another one. Yeah, there's one that you can't even see that's right through there. Uh, and then we'll take that out, and then we'll be able to check voltages, uh, be able to replace that capacitor. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and change those. I know I'm going to need to eventually, uh, but just in case they're leaking. Um, and then that couplet that's in there, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to test the voltage going into the audio output tube and see if it's zero volts. And if not, then I may need to reconstruct that sort of thing in there. So we'll just see when we get to it. So anyway, let me get all the rest of the stuff out of the, out of the deck here, and then I can make room for getting the chassis out of here. So hang on. <laughs> 